next thing on our list is to start on the back of the chair. We're going to deal with the crest rail and the apron right now. Basically what you're looking to do when you mill up your, your crest rail that is, is you want to get as much thickness as possible. So joint one side and then thickness plane the other and just get as much thickness as possible. It's five and a half inches wide and as far as the length is concerned, whatever the length was on my template is what I've cut this to right now. It's going to be too long for the chair and we're okay with that. With it being too long, basically what we're looking to do afterwards is to, after we've created the shape here and cut our mortises, we are going to cut it to length with the angles that match the, the top of the leg in our chair. And we'll pull those angles directly off the chair. I also have our rear apron here, and we're going to mark this out too for our mortises as well as our crest rail. I have my template, which we're going to use to mark our mortises for the crest rail. And then I brought over two printouts from the plan, and they both showed the mortise locations, one for the crest rail and the other for the apron. The first step in this process is to find the center of the crest rail. Okay, I am 17 and a half inches plus a sixteenth, so 17 and 9 sixteenths of an inch is wide. So what I'm going to do is just take my pen and mark just at 8 and 3 quarters. I'm lining everything up and then marking the center of my template. The first mortise, according to our plans, is three inches wide. So what I'm going to do is just take the ruler part of my square out and half of three inches is an inch and a half and make a mark here at an inch and a half in and another at three inches. I'll come over here and bring those lines up. Now we've marked the mortise for the center back slat. Our beginning of our next mortise is going to be one and seven eighths of an inch on both sides of the center back slat mortise. I'm going to do the same on the other side now and bring down lines. We have the next line we have to make for our, the outside of the mortise is one and one quarter inch. And I will bring those lines up. Now I have the three mortise locations marked on the crest rail. And just to help myself, I'm going to make a little squiggly line for all three of these so I know where the mortise lo locations are. With those locations made, now I'm going to take my template and my piece here for the crest rail and I'm just going to transfer those lines across. Before I do that I need to bring down the lines themselves from the top of the template to the side of the template. With everything lined up I can bring my lines down. I'm now going to bring down those lines on the template, on the crest rail too. On this side, I need to bring the lines across from the top before I can bring them down. Because I want to take the center line and bring it up to the top. We'll need this line later on when we're dealing with shaping the crest rail, the crest rail as well as 
marking our cuts when we do our angle cuts to get the crest rail into the chair. The center slat is a sixteenth of an inch farther back than the two side slats. The center slat is half an inch down and I'm going to mark my waist. So I move my square to 7 sixteenths of an inch. I put a little squiggly line to help me know where the waist is. Okay, now I have the rear apron here and we're going to mark out the mortise locations in the rear apron as well. So the first thing I did was I found the center point of my rear apron. I'm going to bring that line down. The next thing I'm going to do is move over three quarters of an inch in each direction and strike a, a mark. Find three quarters of an inch on the other side and bring those lines down. According to our plans, this is, I marked out two of the walls for the two center back slats. The total width of these center back slats are two and five sixteenths of an inch. I'm gonna grab my ruler from the square and find two and five sixteenths of an inch. Okay, I made two tick marks and I'm just gonna draw some lines from those tick marks and then I want to do another line that's an inch over and then from that inch I want to move over another three quarters of an inch and this is the mortise for the side slat that total width should be three quarters of an inch we'll do the same thing over here Okay, I made a mistake and I had labeled the distances for my mortise from the outside instead of from the inside of the rear apron. So I uh, just took my plane and I took qu two quick passes, got rid of what was there before, and then brought my lines back down. So now I'm going to flip over my piece with my inside facing up and now I'm going to mark out my mortise locations. So I'm going to set my square to a quarter of an inch. And mark side slat. And the other side slat at 5 sixteenths of an inch. And now I'm going to mark the location for the center slats. I got the router jig set up and I was about to put the piece for the crest rail into the router jig and I noticed that I forgot to set the depths or mark the depths for our mortises. So for the two side slats, the depth of the mortise is a half an inch. Okay, For the center slat, the depth of the mortise is also a half an inch. However, we are going to be removing a whole bunch of material here. And what we need to do then is come with our square and have that set so that from the line that we draw from the template showing the material we're going to remove that we have it set for a half an inch in from there. So I struck that other line here for the center slat mortise for the depth. Okay, I have my half inch bit into my router. My piece is uh, clamped into the jig here and it was a really long piece and it's just too long to be able to hold 
just with the clamps that are in the jig on the bottom. So what I've also done is grabbed our jig that we use to cut the angled, well support, um, cutting our mortises in the front legs and with that and the fence that I used for that, the cutoff, I have those set behind the jig and I just used some clamps uh, across to help support holding this piece in so we have some clamping power from the top and some clamping power from the bottom. With the piece set in, the next thing I needed to do was set my mortise or my plunge depth on my router for the correct depth. So that depth was just a little bit more than one and a quarter inches. So with all this held in, uh, now it's time to set the router as far as the travel for the cut and the correct location of the uh, bit entering into the mortars that we've marked off. The next thing to do is to set the edge of the bit here. So I rotate the bit so it's running in this direction right here and I now need to find where the bit hits the line for the outer wall yeah I think I'm there After cutting the center back slat mortise, I unclamped the piece, moved it over, and I'm now showing in my window the side back slat. So now what I need to do is reset my depth of my cut for both the bit as far as cutting only a half an inch now. So half an inch plus the depth of my base, plus I need to move the base to realign the bit with the edge of the mortise and the travel that the router will go as it's cutting the mortise. My mortises are now cut on the crest rail, my center back slat and my two side slats. With that cut, I'm going to set that aside. And now I have my rear apron and my jig. Um, it's just locked down with the regular clamps. I've got my first of my four mortises laid out, um, both the travel as well as the depth and then the depth of my bit. Well, the jig's out of the way now, and our mortises, as you saw before, for the crest rail have been cut. And the mortises for our rear apron have been cut. So let's square up uh, one of these center back slat mortises. So I'm going to take my square here and line it up with the edge of this router cut and with my marking knife I'm just going to mark down the side there. So I've got a cut with my marking knife here and now what I'm going to do is just pare some material away with a smaller chisel first and walk the chisel across until I reach that knife line. Now that I've reached the knife line, I've at least established a cut on top. So if any material gets removed below it, it'll at least sever where these fibers have been severed leaving me a nice clean top wall of my mortise. 
the key here, like a lot of things in woodworking, is to not do too much at a time. So right now I'm just trying to remove a little bit of material each time. All right. There you have it. One more is done. A whole bunch more to do. Back over here at the chair, and we have the rear apron installed. Our mortises are all square. We squared up the mortises on two of the three mortises on our crest rail. We did not do the middle one because we still need to remove three quarters of an inch worth of material. And once we remove that material, then we'll square up that mortise there. So the next thing we need to do is find out where this goes and what angle we need to cut the piece at in order to match the angles that are right here for our legs. So if we take a look at our leg template, we drew some marks on here. We have an inch and eighth down and that's roughly where we want the crest rail to have its the top of the crest rail to meet the rear of the leg. And then we have a half an inch, two inches, and then another half an inch. So what we need to do is mark on our leg itself the bottom of where the crest rail meets the rear leg. Okay, so with my square and my rear leg, I took my square and set it up so that the square would be at the bottom of that mark that we made on our rear leg template. And that measurement comes out to four and an eighth inches. You want to come over and mark the bottom for four and one eighth inches on both sides. With that marked, you then want to bring that mark around to the back. The next thing we want to do is we want to take something like I have here a piece of MDF with walnut veneered on two sides of it. Some scrap that's around the shop. MDF would be perfect. And I jointed one face. Okay, so I've clamped my piece of MDF with the walnut veneer onto my chair now and I'm flush on the top on both sides and I've got two quick clamps on each side and the reason why I used two quick clamps on each side was I was able to because I used a quarter inch MDF bend the MDF to match the curvature of the back legs. So with my pencil I can get an accurate drawing of what the edge of the leg is. And then I'm going to take my square, which is flush with the top of this piece, and set it so that if I draw a line, it'll be at the exact same point as the line I drew on my leg. Okay, it's a little hard to see, I'm sorry. Um, but basically I have a pencil line here, a pencil line here and then the pencil line across. So this pencil line here represents the left leg and this one to the right. And this is the bottom of our crest rail. What does this tell us? 
Well, number one up here, it tells us what the angle of our cut's going to be. We'll be able to bring our bevel gauge in and pull the angle for both sides. Because to help us, I came in and darkened the bottom line with some marker. I'm going to set the marker aside. And what I'm looking to do here is put my line up, my ruler that is, against my line. And find out what the total length is. We're at 14 and 26, 30 seconds. So the center point between our points is 7 and 13, 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm going to move over to my pencil and find where 7 and 13, 30 seconds of an inch is. Okay, here's my little tick mark. And now what I'm going to do is bring down the line. This is now the center point between these two points. With those lined up, I can now see where the edge of my crest rail is going to be. So if I take my square and set it for the depth of my crest rail and I bring it over and take my pencil and I put it right where the line starts or comes out that is where the bottom of my crest rail should meet the rear leg and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I got my bevel gauge and I'm bringing it over to my MDF here. I can now come in here and find my angle. I can now come over here make a tick mark and take my bevel gauge match that tick mark and draw a line so that's only on the right hand side though not on the left so i have my board here and i'm setting the angle for the left hand side and it is slightly different than the angle on the right hand side and I can now bring my bevel gauge over. I can line it up with my line here. Everything's good and I can strike a line. So what we want to do now is make some marks that we can cut over at the table saw to change the overall length of this piece. And what I want to do is I want to remove some material from each side both here and from here and I want to give myself maybe okay so I'm going to come over an eighth of an inch and might make a mark and then with my longer square I'm going to bring down this line I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I have brought my piece, at least for the right side so far, up to my blade. And I've made sure that I'm going to cut right where the pencil line is. The idea here is we're going to remove some material. And it's going to decrease the distance the bit has to go, has to cut. As well as the distance that the bit has to travel, more importantly. So that we can cut the mortise here so we can have our slip tenons. Okay, now it's time to mark out the joinery on our crest rail. So the first thing we're going to do is mark in a quarter of an inch. from the outside. I'm going to set my 
So I got a half an inch marked out. And that's going to be the bottom of our mortise. We'll do that on both sides. We now need to cut the mark the length of the mortise, which is two inches. So a half an inch plus two is two and a half inches. And we'll do that on the other side as well. Now we have the location of our mortise. So now what I want to do is mark the depth of my mortise. Now the mortise, we're going to cut it so it's flat. But once we remove this material here, the mortise will, it won't be angled, but the reveal of it will be angled matching the reveal on the leg. I want to set my square for a half an inch from the line right here that we're going to cut. So that's how deep we have to set our bit. So if that's a half an inch, what we're looking at right now, basically 7 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to write 7 eighths of an inch right there so I don't forget. So what we're going to do now is route out our mortise into the end grain. So I've already uh, set my stops. I've set my depth, which was 7 eighths of an inch plus the half an inch for the plywood. Before we route this, I do want to say one thing. I'm using the same bit here that I use in the rear legs. So this is a quarter inch spiral bit. All right, we're over at the table saw and we're just about to cut our crest rail to length. It's pretty exciting. We routed out our mortises on both sides and they look great. And now all we need to do is set our bevel gauge. So I've actually done that already. I took the bevel gauge and I put it on the piece and I pulled the angle from the drawing we did earlier right off the piece and I then took my bevel gauge onto my miter gauge and set up my angle to my blade. Uh, we need to do one more thing we actually should draw a line coming down from the top on both sides and that'll help us set up the blade where, where we need to cut. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is set up my cut. I'm going to bring my piece over and move it over. And find a tooth with an edge. To set up the cut for the left side, we can rotate the piece 180 degrees and take our mark for our, our measurement for our bevel gauge now. Okay, so we need to adjust the bevel gauge from the top now down instead of from the bottom up. So we're going to change the angle of the miter gauge to the blade. And since we flipped it around 180, what we want to do is flip the piece so it's angling straight into the saw like this. So what I did was I took my bevel gauge, and I'll come and show you. I took my bevel gauge and I took my, my angle from the top of the piece instead. So I set that up. Just like before, we're going to set up the piece next to the line. So since this is an alternate tooth bevel blade, every other tooth has the um, edge of it or the, where the point is. So I'm going to find where one is that has the point on the left hand side all 
All right, we finished cutting the angles on our crest rail, so we now have it cut the length. You see I have some slip tenons in right now on both sides. Um, what I did was I milled up some stock to 0.252 inches, and I got that measurement by taking my dial caliper here, my digital dial caliper, and measuring the average between width for my mortise here, as well as my mortise and my crest rail. So I milled up some material, so I cut it to length. It's a little short right now. These are gonna be my temporary ones. When I glue the chair up, I'll put new ones in. All right, in order to put the crest rail in, I need to get a little bit of space here. So what I'm gonna do is just unclamp the chair a little bit, and I'm just going to open up a little bit of space here in the back. Great, I'm gonna reclamp up the back of the chair. Let's clamp up the legs up on top and see how we look. What I'm doing is I drew those lines around, those lines here marking my uh, angle earlier and where the, where the rail where the crest rail and the legs meet and I'm just moving the crest rail up to that point. Now the crest rail is a little proud here and basically what we're going to need to do is when we uh, carve the crest rail we'll bring that back. Nothing to worry about right now. This is great. This is great. It's really beginning to look like a gamble house living room armchair. All right, we're over here at the bandsaw, and I took my crest rail out of my chair, and I double stick tape our template to it. Lined everything up with the center line here, which is the same center line we drew on our template, so everything's perfectly flush. Uh, my lines that I drew before are coming out great, so I know I'm centered and located properly on my template. What we're gonna do over here at the bandsaw is just cut out all of this waste. Um, you know, I like to cut out with the template on. You may like to cut out with the template off. Either way, let's just get close to remove all the waste on the outside. Next thing we need to do is we need to remove the waste here in the handle area. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is use my drill press. I have a half inch a bit chucked in, it's a Forstner bit, and I'm just going to drill across the top, the bottom, and in and around here to remove this uh, centerpiece here. And we finished uh, drilling through our handle here and got a whole bunch of the waste taken out. Um, now what I'm gonna do is with some chisels, just help myself out a little bit more and chisel down and remove some of these high points here as well as work into some areas that I wasn't able to get to with the drill bit. With our template double stick taped on, I have put a bottom bearing template routing bit in right now. now. I personally, I don't have a bit that's tall enough to do the whole thing in one pass. So what we're going to end up doing is doing two passes on this one. We're going to use this bit and remove a chunk of material all around the outside. And then once we're done going around the outside, then I'll reset up and we'll talk about how to focus on the inside, deal with that. We are going to start with the bit here, our piece in between. We're going to turn it on, we're going to have it start spinning in this direction. As it spins in that direction, we're going to push into the bit and start routing. As we do that, we're going to turn into the piece here, route, route these corners, and then go from left to right all the way through. So you can route on the other side of the bit, you just need to route in the opposite direction we normally go in. Now I have a 
spiral bit with a top bearing on it and we're going to be able to now use that to come in and remove the rest of the material for the crest rail on the outside as well as the inside. We're just going to clean up some of this burning that happened when we were using the first bit. And the first bit I was using was the pattern routing bit with the temp bearing guide on the bottom and the straight cutter knives. We've got one last thing to do in this step and that's to square up the center back slat mortise. So just like before, we're going to do the exact same thing. Well, I'm happy, and if you're at this point in the video and your chair's looking like this, you should be really happy too. Our crest rail looks great, the pattern routing went off flawlessly, did a little bit of cleanup on the sander, but it looks really good. All of our mortises have been squared up, we have nice clean lines on our handle and the upper uh, section of the crest rail with the cloud lift pattern, great connection between the joints. Uh, for our slip, where our slip tenons are for the crest rail into the legs. And overall, the chair is just really looking good. The next step in this process is we're going to start working on the center back slat as well as the two slide slats. We're going to create a bent lamination form and then we're going to mill up some lumber. We saw some um, eighth inch pieces out of that and glue them up and cut them to size and fit them. Mm -hmm.